also Denise in the back uh, through our communication center. If we have any questions, um, let me just scrape up when we start this off. Okay. At 2, 12 19 today, we ended up receiving an audible alarm through our uh, radio system of an intruder alert at uh, Ben Franklin. Officers responded to the scene, uh, arriving at 12 22, uh, about two minutes later. Uh, we remained at the scene. It was Stevens Point Police Department, Portage Junction Department, Plover PD, Emergency State Patrol, Emergency Management, and uh, uh, DNR was actually there also. Uh, Metro, uh, Stevens Point Fire and Ambulance uh, arrived at the scene. We conducted a search of the building uh, during uh, evacuations. We actually had students evacuating upon our arrival. Uh, other students remained in lockdown. Um, we uh, conducted a, a sweep, evacuated students that were in lockdown, and uh, eventually had all students uh, either relocated at the Whiting Fire Station. We did have some students that went either to the bus garage, uh, also had some students that were at uh, the auto zone. Uh, parents were notified or either contacted our communication center, and uh, they were uh, advised to go to the Ruth Guilfrey building. Obviously, uh, several contacts were made uh, via social media uh, from students, I understood, and uh, other outlets uh, that did have a role in uh, where parents uh, and other uh, individuals were responding to. Uh, I don't have the exact time that we cleared. Um, I believe it was probably about uh, one hour ago where the building was cleared. At this point, we haven't determined uh, uh, the exact cause. We have a couple leads to follow up, but uh, at this point, no threat was identified and no injuries were uh, uh, also either identified. Any questions? So basically, this is just someone pulled the fire alarm? I can't answer that uh, or confirm that at this point. Uh, we've uh, either this was a mechanical issue or uh, uh, somebody possibly had uh, pulled the alarm. Uh, hopefully we'll have some answers on that in the near future. Were any other schools locked down? Uh, I did receive information afterwards that the uh, bus garage also had some students located in it. And that went uh, into a shutdown. Uh, we did send a team over there and determined that that was already cleared. However, we also found out that McKinley Elementary went into a lockdown and uh, we contacted the communication center after everything was cleared to notify, and that was uh, lifted. If you have any more questions, I don't know if Denise had any follow-up. Uh, I'm assuming everything went, uh, uh, went fine at that location. Uh, it was not a fire alarm. This is actual uh, notification trip that we have with all our schools. If it was a... a an intruder, it's mm -hmm. not an uh, actual fire alarm. So you guys got a tip that there was an intruder, though, I guess an alarm, just for people who don't know, I guess. Okay. Uh, we have an alarm system that's set up through our uh, radio uh, in the squads. So all law, uh, all law enforcement within Portage County will hear that and respond. You don't actually need to receive a complaint. It's automated. Who can push that? Who can have access to that alarm at the school? There's different locations within the school where that's located. So students don't have access to that, just teachers, I guess? Obviously, well, it's in uh, an open area. It's not a secured location where, where those alarms would be at, so. Do you have any estimate of how big of a response you had as far as officers? Uh, the count the I have, uh, I believe this would just be officer count responding to the scene was, uh, I believe, 40, approximately 40. Would you characterize that as typical for an alarm like this? It's, uh, it's an all-hands-on-deck call, and uh, I'd say very impressed uh, with all agencies uh, that responded. Uh, we were on scene, I, I believe, within three minutes, we were uh, sufficiently staffed at scene to, to do an entry and, and secure the update. Uh, can you speak at all to how students are getting home today? There was some question that uh, initially had conversations with the principal, who was also obviously in contact with uh, school administration. Uh, we were not sure at what point we were going to have the building clear. 
So we had some uh, preliminary plans of how we were going to uh, get, parent, or get kids home or uh, reunite them with their parents. Uh, the last piece of information I had that we would have enough time to clear and then have students go back to the school and resume regular busing and uh, we were able to accomplish that. At the scene with, with the kids in the parking lots, a lot of kids were alleging that they'd heard shots fired. Do we know paranoia? Do we know what, what, where that came from? A lot of statements get made. Uh, I have heard some statements that were put out on social media and that is the, uh, that's what we have to deal with with social media. There was no uh, shots fired or anything confirmed at the scene that would even be consistent with uh, that type of uh, call. Okay. Okay. I just want to say thank you, all of you, and all those that you represent here. I'll tell the sheriff the same. I've already told the emergency management. Okay. You make us all really proud for what you pull together and only few moments well in it, uh, it takes a whole group of people uh, I appreciate that but starting in the communication center uh, I can only surmise the amount of calls that Denise was getting uh, at uh, rapidly coming in uh, you know the fire department ambulance crew showing up at the scene staging helping us with uh, evacuation and then getting parents back and uh, the different departments like I said, we had officers uh, on scene and to sufficient numbers where we could actually do a coordinated uh, entry, uh, not just you know rushing in. This we had we had teams moving in, up to 40 personnel. Uh, just this county. Just this just county. Portage county. Well, you had state patrol that had a number of individuals out there. And DNR. DNR, DNR was on scene. Yeah. Uh, we do train with these individuals. We actually have a training coming up in March, uh, rescue task force training and all these uh, individuals, mm -hmm. these groups, we, we train with at that point. So uh, obviously when it's all said and done, uh, there are things that we can uh, do better. Uh, absolutely. That's, that's why we train. That's when we respond to calls like this. We do debriefs. Uh, am I pleased with the response? Yes, I am. But there's Mm -hmm. uh, things that we can learn from and we can do better in the future and we certainly will. And obviously this is still under investigation as well. You still have some things S to clean up as well. Still under investigation. Um, I, I can't uh, guarantee I'm going to have an answer by the end of the day on what, what caused this. Um, but I'm happy happy that no, no one got hurt. Uh, there was uh, somewhat chaos when we were showing up with students that were uh, fleeing to the north. Uh, they did locate at uh, AutoZone on their own. Uh, I know the sheriff at this point is communicating uh, a blackboard release uh, to notify individuals in the community that uh, students can be picked up and everything is cleared. And really, that's at, that's where we're at at this point. You know, at the point was we responded into the building. Then you go to phase two, make sure everybody makes it back home and gets reunited with their loved ones. And how are parents notified in the beginning? Blackboard, you said? Uh, Blackboard or? notification will be going out now. That's more or less then, a, a. But initially, though, how were they notified, I guess, or I guess through students? Initially, uh, the, the word was getting passed around by social media. Everybody pretty much has a cell phone these days. Because actually, when they're departing on evacuation, I think uh, probably three fourths of the student had a cell phone in their hand carrying over there. So I'm sure uh, individual notifications were made. But uh, uh, afterwards, uh, we had a, quite a few contacts that were coming into the dispatch center. Uh, obviously, media was notified ra quite rapidly, so um, that, you know, in, in the end, uh, after we secured the scene, is when we're working with the schools to make contact. But also, we had um, uh, teachers that were getting evacuated with the students and working with the principal, communicating with those uh, teachers to round up as many students as they could, get a head count. If they were leaving with parents, uh, get the name of the student, mm -hmm. and uh, you know that's the best we could do at that point. So no intruder. No intruder. No threat was identified. Okay. I think it's important to note too that um, when something like this happens, you, you don't necessarily have details right away, but the fact that 
everybody was responding as per procedure uh, to identify what threats, if any. Fortunately, there were no threats identified in this scenario. Everyone was safe. Uh, the, the chaos that happens is expected. Uh, but I think, Chief, help me out here. There was the, the initial response was 22 seconds, right? Initial response call was received at 1219, uh, dispatched at 1220. Uh, officers were on the scene actually within two minutes, but we already have officers on the scene with our school liaison. School liaison officers. So the, the uh, reaction was immediate and in a very short amount of time, thanks to the great personnel we have at dispatch. Our law enforcement, both city, county, and uh, Plover, DNR, State Patrol, everybody responded the way they're expected to and we'll have a debriefing on this to see what we can do to improve, as the Chief said. So this is just typical to bring everybody on, even when you hear this alarm? This particular call, uh, we trained for these types of responses, and we responded exactly how we trained. 